Welcome to this introduction to Daz Studio 2.0 and in this tutorial and the upcoming tutorials I'm going to be focusing on some basic to intermediate topics covering the Daz Studio 2.0 application and right now what I'm going to be focusing on is the user interface and the reason why I'm starting here is because your user interface might look much different from mine which may lead to some confusion as I'm trying to instruct people how to use the application so just so we're all on the same page I'm just going to show you how you can get your application to look like mine and again you don't have to do this it's just that if you do it may help you avoid some confusion with some of these lessons in the future but right now I'm going to go to the view menu item right up here interface layout and in the select layout menu item you're going to find this dialog that allows you to select your particular application layout and you have a lot to choose from now one question that some people might ask is which is the best layout to have and that is just all a matter of preference all right it doesn't really matter what layout you use it just really matters whether or not it goes with your workflow Okay, so someone who's a, who's a scripter, someone who does a lot of scripting and programming within Desk Studio might prefer this advanced scripting layout. All right, if you're someone that does a lot of different kind of work, you might choose something like a paired progressive where you can load or create or shape or skin within various tabs where you have a lot of different functionalities within multiple tabs okay so if your your workflow varies from time to time you ha you work on very various different types of projects you might prefer a layout like this but again there is no right or wrong layout it's all a matter of preference and another thing i do want to mention is that choosing different layouts does not limit limit the functionality of the application at all either so if I chose a basic layout as opposed to the advanced paired progressive layout I'm gonna get the same functionality out of Dad's studio no matter what the only difference is going to be the appearance and the way windows are arranged I'm going to stick to just the classic view I don't want to worry about having to switch through different tabs throughout these tutorials we're just gonna to stick to one basic classic window and once I select that view I can hit accept and now that loads up and here I have that classic view as a layout now one thing you might notice up here is that my toolbars kind of got distributed a bit strange and that is because I'm running at a low screen resolution and in order to fix that I can just click on these handles for the tools and drag them into place another thing I'm going to change here to get even more screen real estate is I'm gonna undock this toolbar below right here and what I'm going to do is unclick on this drop down menu right here and I'm gonna to choose to undock the toolbar and now I have this collapsing toolbar that's off into the corner and it gives me a little bit more screen real estate in addition to that I can click on these handles to expand these menu items out or collapse them now this I just typically like to leave open these are my navigation tools here and I'll talk about this a little later also I can double click here and just collapse this thing to virtually nothing okay so now we have this really hidden and I can just double click here and get it back All right but I'm gonna stick with that there and in here I'm going to just get rid of my view tab now I can just drag this view tab off of the docking pane now it's not here docked anymore and to get rid of it I can just close it and the reason why I did that was because a lot of the icons you'll find in the view tab are just located right here this is where I can access almost everything that was on the view tab so I don't need that there at all alright puppeteer I can drag that out here I'm not going to be using that for a while so I'm gonna close that up alright so we do have these panes here if you click on the handles you can open and close panes as you've just seen you can drag one tab to another pane you can drag tabs off of panes just by clicking here power pose it's another one that I'm not going to need. All right, one thing I do want to mention, though, is, okay, here I just close these tabs, and they're gone. All right, the view tab's gone, puppeteer's gone, power pose is gone. But what if I did want to get that back? The way I would do that is I would go into View, Tabs, and here's the new at DAS tab. Now that floating window is out there, it's back. If I want to dock it again, I can click on this tab and drag it in here, and it's docked again. Now what if I took this parameters tab and just dragged it off? 
now I don't even have a docking pane here to drag this tab back into. Now if I wanted to dock this again, I would have to scroll to the area, to the edge of the screen where I want to dock this thing. And it's really difficult to see, but as I'm moving back and forth here, you can kind of see this little line. If you take a look right about there, see it lighting up a little bit. And again, it is just difficult to see. But once that lights up, I can let go and it'll dock. So you can get that docked again by doing that. I do also like to have my timeline up at the top of my screen. So I'm going to move my timeline off of here and drag that up to the top here. Okay, so now my timeline is at the top of the screen where I prefer to have it. And also here in the View tab, we have Interface Style. You can select the style. Now my icons mimic Carrera, but you can choose from different styles for your application. All right, I'm going to stick with Carrera simply because I use Carrera quite a bit, so it's helpful to have these icons that look like Carrera icons as I'm going through these tutorials. And I guess that's about it. Really, that's all you need to know right now. And there are a lot of other ways to customize this application and the interface, but I'm not really going to get into it right now. It's something that you're, you're not really going to need to know. But right now I do just want to focus on the basics. And in this tutorial, really what I wanted to get across was that even though our applications could look quite different, you can customize things however you want. You're not going to lose any functionality by customizing things or choosing different layouts. But in addition to that, it may be helpful for you to set up your interface so it looks like mine. And just keep in mind that you can really move these tabs around wherever you want. And from time to time, you know, I'll have my scene tab here and you know you may have moved your scene tab over to here but don't get confused when I open this up and say okay I'm going to go in my scene tab and when you know you go to look for your scene tab and let's say yours is over here and this is closed up and you know you open this window you don't have to say well God, I don't have a scene tab now what do I do but to find it you can just look here maybe here or if it's not even here you can go to view tabs and select scene and then you'll get this floating window and then you can dock it to wherever you like all right so hopefully you'll have an easier time following along with the tutorials that are coming up what we're going to be focusing on in the next tutorial is the content library this is really the heart of data studio and oh even though some of this material is really boring when it comes to the content library within data studio it's just the heart of the application and since we're just kind of kicking off things and getting started with Data Studio, we do have to really get some of these technical issues out of the way. And I do apologize if some of these earlier tutorials are a little boring. Unfortunately, there's just no way around it. We do have to cover these subjects here. And the content library is just essential. Okay, you have to understand how this thing is set up in order to really get any use out of Daz Studio. It's really just important that you know how to set up content within Daz Studio. I mean, after all, Daz Studio is a content-driven application. So with that, I'm just going to end this tutorial.